January event schedule is up. Our guild events are rolling for 2020 because this is our first podcast of 2020 as well. And The Mandalorian, the TV show, is awesome. We're going to talk about that tonight. So these topics and more are coming up on this episode of the Escape Podcast for Star Wars The Old Republic. Our broadcast astromech today is EPC-323. And playing alongside me is Seema. Hi, Seema. How is it going? Hi, Max. Going pretty well. I am excited about 2020. Um, but I, I'm always, I always am in January excited, excited about the new year. Um, I was trying to think back of where I was at this point in 2019, and I'm pretty sure I was excited about 2019. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about keeping a journal this year, but I don't mean a journal like Dear Diary or a lot of writing. I mean like a book where I can just keep everything together in, a, in an analog kind of way, like whenever someone gives me an idea that, of a book I want to read, for instance, write it down in the book. Um, cause what I do now is I actually write it down in a file, but then I don't, I'm not good about keeping the files all together or I, I just think I'll remember it and then I don't or something to, you know, movies that I want to watch would be an, another list or things that I want to do so that I, I don't forget. Not so much that I do them because I put them on the list, but they're on the list because I just didn't want to forget that at one point I wanted to do them. And so maybe approach the year with a little bit more intention. So the idea is to like do more, uh, but be happier about it, not yeah. stress out about it. So that's what I'm looking forward to in 2020. Plus I'm also looking forward to lots of SWOTAR and other video games that I enjoy. Um, and speaking of SWOTAR, I will just say that this week on Tuesday, we had our MFN and we went and we did we killed some world bosses. In fact we killed the one on Bel Savis, I think, three times, right? Because yeah. um the primal destroyer. Yes, getting people caught up on the vehicle quest um as much as we can. So we we do we kinda hit that every once in a while and over time people do get that quest completed. And we did some rampaging. And then you and I just had our, we just came from our ops night um, where we were in the Duxon operation and that was a lot of fun. We we did the first boss and then the second boss, which actually isn't, doesn't feel like a boss or is that the second and third boss? Well, second anyway, it's third. more like yeah. a, it's more like a, it's like Fights. a boss made of trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a boss made of trash. I think there's. So anyway, it's like a gauntlet kind of a thing. Howl's but actually, I kind of like it or... because it still requires some coordination, and I like it better than um, a similar thing that was in Gods from the Machine. But in Gods from the Machine, it actually was just trash. It happened between two bosses, and this actually being a boss fight makes it different for me because it actually feels like it has a point, and you get loot and all that stuff. So yeah, I don't mind that. I like the fact that, you know, you watch for certain signals, and then you move to the next rock and all that stuff. Yeah, um, good times. So it was a fun evening. Um, then we got to the the Trandoshan boss, which Trandoshans, I mean, you know, those are always fun, right? In every setting, including the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. um, and we are learning that fight and figuring it out. And um, that was a lot of fun because we haven't been, we haven't been done that for a while. So... Um, it was fun and actually pretty hilarious at moments too. So that's, I couldn't ask for more out of an ops night. Um, yeah. So also in SOTOR, I've been looking at conquest. I think I'm going to get um, three characters to conquest on the pub site and one on the imp side, but maybe, maybe four on the pub site. We shall see. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, and how about you? I mean, you're looking forward to 2020, Max? Sure am. <laughs> things are things are busy right now, which is which is part of the fun. But uh, in prep for 2020, I built a new PC. I got a new mixer board for the podcast here, so I've got our 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 voices are and our audio should be mixed a little bit better for the stuff going out on YouTube. I got a, an Elgato Stream Deck as as part of it, so I've got a nice new little rig here. And that's that's working in an interesting way. 
I pushed the limits just a little bit too far. And so this is actually this, this the <laughs> try version number two of our podcast tonight. Uh, we did the first couple minutes and realized that me bumping up the streaming to higher than 1920 by 1080, uh, the, the bandwidth of, of, uh, you know, up from my end and down from the other ends just wasn't cutting it. So I went back to down to 1920 streaming, uh, but that's okay. Uh, it's now it's going well. And I think this setup is going to be really nice for, for 2020. Uh, so P I also rebuilt my PC as I, as I mentioned, that was a huge project. It was, it was fun, but I had to get a whole bunch of new parts, even though I was Keeping a and bunch by of fun, parts. Do you mean like terrible and frustrating? Parts of it were, uh, but but not too bad. I uh, I you know I wasn't I um, I didn't bleed. So anytime <laughs> I do a project and I I don't bleed, then uh, I used to work <laughs> I used to work in the garage a lot, and I you could not finish like a pro, you know like changing the brakes on the car or, or whatever without bleeding. So. I, I didn't bleed, although I, this NZXT case that I have, I nearly just I, I don't I don't understand modern PC cases. That well, I don't know why people want the whole bunch of lights inside their PC case. I and in fact I I pur purposely had to get a version of this that didn't have like like an extra power supply and like extra strips of RGB lights that could be connected to Philips Hue so I could. From my phone, change the lights inside my PC, PC case. Why? Who wants that? I don't. I, I. Apparently, people do because it's a big deal. It's a big thing. I've got right. a tempered piece of glass that's the side of this PC case. I didn't want it. I would have liked just. I want a monolith. I want like, you know, like 2001. Just a giant monolith that's silent. That's my perfect PC case, and I cannot. I can't have that. Apparently, I think it's lot. like. Um, you know, I think it's like the person who wants like a million pillows on their bed. It's like, you don't get that either. Right. But this is the, this is a, a similar <laughs> sort of decor thing, but your decor is all about your computer and you want a million lights on it. Maybe, maybe. Or the people that like put lights underneath their car and so like the, the, L, the LED strips underneath the car and stuff. I don't know. I, I don't want that. I want it. A solid, <laughs> silent brick. Zen says, so you don't have an RGB chair? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I've got like, I've got like a shop light, like a light bulb screwed into a shop. I was, I was, I was thinking of like grabbing a couple of those and shoving that in the case and like taking a picture of that and saying, hey, got my new lights in my case. <laughs> derp, derp. Uh, but I didn't do that. 150 uh, upvotes on Reddit. You that. <laughs> I, would get, I sure certainly would get that. Uh, so that's that's that. That's what I was doing. Uh, but we do have some news to go over too. So sort of. an Imperial News Network report. Just a couple quick news things. The January in-game events notice is up. Uh, yeah. So there's not all that much news, but so let's let's look at this. We updated the schedule for January. January, this January, uh, Bounty Contract Week, Pirate Incursion, Relics of the Gree. Uh, looks good. Uh, yeah. Pirate Incursion, January 14th to 21st. Oh, because that's coming next week, so that's what the next thread is about. So why don't right. you tell me the deal with, with that then, Seema? So the question is, is the Dantooine event fixed? And the answer is... Oh, was it broken? <laughs> <laughs> so, so a couple things. Um, as, one was the, the turret. As Geralt would say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he would. Yes, he would. A <laughs> um, couple things. The, the the turret quest didn't get tuned right in the on all the syncing that happened for 6.0. Um, that was supposed to be fixed, but people, I haven't tried it yet but people are reporting that it hasn't really been fixed um and also i last time uh we had the pirate inversion pirate yes the dantooine conquest week incursion thank you um it the the dailies on dantooine and there was no didn't count for i mean the dailies and the rampage were not in the conquest objective so they were asking if that's been fixed and eric just 
popped into the thread to said he would check and that's where we are on that right now right right i think they are probably probably not fixed because people were probably on vacation uh for a week and didn't fix this and did other things leading up to the holidays so maybe they can fix it in the next week that'd be nice uh otherwise the pirate incursion is still fun it's still fun to do and if you don't have all of the rep you can still be doing that there's rep and rewards and and fun stuff you can be doing both during the pirate event and when the pirate event is not going on on Tatooine. so remember that so one thing that um somebody commented in that thread too is that they were they wish that galactic rampage would come back because then even lower level um tunes could you know contribute to conquest and i i've I've been thinking about that, and I I did like Galactic Rampage because you got to see the numbers tick up, and if you were doing some unrelated thing, you could say, oh, well, it's also counting God. for Get Rampage. But the reality is, I think we get more points the way it is now, where just everything counts. I think that was the point of why they took away Galactic Rampage, yeah, because I everything is, I mean, you sort of get, even though you don't, you realize it oh we got people chattering in the bar here yeah uh, even though you don't realize it you you you're you're getting that but yeah i still i like galactic rampage as a as a another counter another thing to to think about and go after yeah. and do um i mean i was playing this morning and i felt like doing black hole daily weekly on one of my characters and as i was doing that i thought oh it'd be fun if i could if I would see Galactic Rampage ticking up right now. But I can look at my conquest total and see that ticking up too. Right, which it certainly which it certainly is. So there's that. Uh in community news, we're kicking off twenty twenty with our guild. We had a mandatory fun night already or two. Did we have two? No, I just guess just one so far. Yeah, right, because New Year's Day was or New Year's Eve was the, the previous one. And we have a monthly Epic Guild activity tomorrow night, so the 10th, Friday. If if you're downloading this podcast, it might be right as you're listening to it and downloading it. Uh, but that's our first one for the year, and we'll have a whole series of them coming every month throughout the year. Marcus has got things lined up. Uh, he's already planning things out for February and March and uh, getting the ball rolling. So that's excellent. Happy to see yeah, that. Yeah, drop continue. by tomorrow night. We're going to do some stuff. Yeah. They're typically open to everyone, and we can usually, the kinds of things we do, we can pack a lot of people into, killing world bosses and going after Datacrons and doing a lot of fun Possibly stuff like that. Possibly doing some trivia. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Our trivia master is excellent, and uh, winning uh, trivia, uh, answering the trivia question comes with prizes, typically. So there you get that going for you. I won a prize last time we did trivia because there was an Orgelon question. Was it a major prize? What is it? Was it a fragile leg lamp? <laughs> it was a major prize. It was a speeder. It was a speeder, and you got to pick. I did. Um, also, just to say, um, we are. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we need to have this in the community news anymore, but we're on logistical encryptions now. If you get an encryption you want to donate it logistical is the one we're still good we're, we're close to opening up all the rooms on both flag, guild flagships that have perks but we'll continue to keep opening all the little spaces that don't have any perks so yeah we're close to finishing off the, the flagships on both sides um to, to finishing unlocking them which is which is pretty exciting uh, so much so that we've been unlocking so many rooms lately we were going to have like another unlocking ceremony and i I sort of said, you know, we keep having those. And people are just <laughs> it's not like, that interesting. Yeah. It's not that not that exciting anymore. Uh, open it up another room. All right. We're going to stand there while Max clicks the unlock button and oh, eh, open the door and there's nothing in there. Good job. So we'll get we'll get the rest of them unlocked relatively quickly. And maybe for the last room on each ship, we'll, we'll have a party and an event for that. Uh, the other part of MFN that has started up is we're back to MFN and Conquest Focus for us has switched back to alternating weeks between uh, Republic and Imperial. So this is a Republic week for us. Yes. On yes, Tuesday, it it'll switch over to an Imperial week. The things we do on MFN, we'll focus on that faction. 
and the things we do for conquest. We'll do large on the, the side that we're focusing on and we'll do medium on the side that we're not. So that's where we've gotten back to. Everybody's gotten enough characters uh, leveled up. We've got alts on both sides to be able to do all this kind of stuff. Glad we're, we're, we're back to the, to, we, brought, we brought balance back to the force, which is how it should be. Yes. And as always, thank you to the chat room. It's, uh, oh no, uh, well, yes, still thank you to the chat room. Thank you everyone. <laughs> No, no, no thanks to the chat room. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I meant just not yet. Yes, yeah, so we can we'll do thanks to the chat room. And then I will also mention our contest, our Duxin boss kill contest, Trace Comas, one billion credits, is complete. It is finished. It is done. We had the the drawing and we had a winner from the Darth Malgus server. I forgot their name. I will give it to you in just a second here. But new member of the uh, uh, Trace so the, Comas. Yeah, Trace Trace Comas Club on the Republic side of Darth Malgus. Character name Izzel. Izzel the Healer, and uh, I think Izzel there did uh, had had some great boss uh, picture boss kill pictures that got sent in and. You know, a whole, whole bunch of entries. It was it was pretty nice. It wasn't overwhelming. I was afraid we were going to get like hundreds, and uh, and I was going to be buried under them. Uh, but no, it it wasn't it wasn't bad. So I was able to personally ensure that each set of entries was properly counted, and we got them all in a spreadsheet, and we did a roll, and we recorded it. Um, and Izzel did uh, did did well getting that trace comas. Keep an eye out next expansion. Uh, we've got a couple of the, you know, we've got one major contributor out there who donated a billion credits to make this happen this time around. And I know they're, they're, they've done this in the community um, time after time. So something that can happen again in the future. And yes, as I said, shout out to the chat room. Thank you all. You've got us back on track here for 2020. Uh, set, set yeah, the, we almost fell off track. Yeah, we almost, we almost crashed and burned. Um, but now we're now we're back on track. So thank you for that. And now we're now for something just a little little bit different. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Would you agree? We are going to talk about the Mandalorian. We've got a bunch of topics lined up for 2020. We have a bunch of SWOTOR specific to topics lined up for 2020, but there was some really exciting Star Wars stuff in the past month, month and a half. So we're going to do one episode uh, tonight on The Mandalorian, the TV show, and we'll probably do an episode uh, next week or the week after or see how we want to uh, space them out. We'll do one on Rise of Skywalker. It's, it's some fun stuff. Uh, Mandalorian in particular. I really liked both of them, but uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna start with this because I really liked the Mandalorian. So for anyone who's listening, this will not be spoiler free. <laughs> so it will have spoilers. The point isn't for us to spoil everything, but we're certainly not gonna hold back. We're gonna talk about everything. So you know, if you have not finished the series, we will be talking about a couple things even from the last episode. We're mostly going to be focusing focusing on just throughout what we liked and you know who's who the actors are and fun stuff that we saw. But if you are wanting to not be spoiled or you haven't watched it at all or you have not finished the last episode yet, this is me stretching it out and giving you the warning. And now yeah. I am right. about to right. hit the button now if you don't want to hear unleash. So the spoilers are coming. I have spoken. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wanted to kick it off. I wanted to kick it off with just our general impressions. So, so Seema, what would you, if someone was going to ask for your elevator pitch of, did you like it? Did you not like it? What do you think of that new Mandalorian show? What would you say to them? I would say I like it. I find it very entertaining. I like, I liked it, when Firefly did it, sort of like the Western in space, mm -hmm. and it, it is kind of a, it is kind of like that. Um, I like that it pays homage to a lot of Star Wars stuff before it and after it. 
but also it pays homage to westerns. Um, I've I I love the music. I love the effects. I I love the chore choreography of the fights. So yeah, thumbs up from me. I would say, and I I tried to even like craft like a you know like a two. What did I put it put here? This is probably dumb now. I gotta go back. I was writing this out earlier today. I find Mandalorian to be the start of a refreshingly non-epic <laughs> adventure in a familiar yet unique setting. New, compelling characters with complex motivations make even non-arc episodes opportunities to discover and learn more along the way. Fan service is embedded throughout without bashing the fans <laughs> over the head with it. All right. So I guess what I was trying to say there was, I re I really love it. I I I liked it from the very start all the way through to the very end. Um, I was worried when we weren't getting that many arc episodes within the eight episodes. We had like three there that that seemed to be like losing the plot a little bit, but th but then I was fine with it as long as they kept you know as long as eventually you got back to the plot. I don't mind. In fact. I, I don't mind those those interspersed episodes that do other things. In fact, I think you could probably end up with more than an eight episode season if you even threw in a couple more of those and had a couple of you know a couple more side adventures, a couple more bounties that he needs to go hunt to to grab some cash, a couple more planets that he needs to go check out and maybe try to hide out on for a little bit. Um, so I I liked it from that perspective, and I did think. So my, my comment there in the first um, sentence was that it's non-epic. It's n It felt to me really interesting in that it's not, you know, the galaxy, we, we got to save the galaxy and you're the man to, to do it. And because it's not, it's, it's sort of like a much smaller story so far, at least. And hopefully it'll sort of stay that way. He's just, he's just one Mandalorian. He's just a guy. He's not, he's not like the, the savior, the chosen one. Uh, and he's, you know, now he's, he's got like a, a purpose and he's executing on that purpose, but he's not like, you know, he's not the chosen. You are the chosen one, Anakin. You are supposed to unify the force, you know? So I, you, you don't have to, it just doesn't come at it with that kind of expectation that this is some big epic thing that has to, to be epic and finish in an epic way. Um, which I like. And then what did I say about the characters? Uh, I, I like just everything is is not bashing you over the head with it. They didn't they did, didn't even tell you the 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 Mandalorian's name until what until the last episode or the second to last episode. Uh, they introduced a couple of characters along the way, but they don't they don't like they do a lot of telling. You know, it's like you know this. This is Kara. She's from Alderaan. She hates the Empire. She is is your... I'm glad to see you, the Mandalorian, whose name is Jin. I'm your friend Kara from... You know, it, it just happens. And you learn about it as, the, as time goes on, if you're meant to learn about it. And if you're not, you're not, which I think is great. Um, and then, yeah, the fan service part. We'll talk about some of those elements, but I think there was a lot... There was probably a lot of fan service in there but not in the way that that kind of bugs me <laughs> which i have said before which is um wait i i gotta dig around in my my new stream deck here uh i didn't put all my sound effects in here but like this sir the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3720 to one never tell me the odds never tell me the odds so then every time you see Han Solo in every single next movie where there's a Han Solo or Han Solo as a young person or somebody in Han Solo's ship, somebody goes, never tell me the odds. And you go, oh, yeah, there, that's the thing he said. <laughs> so it's fan service without that, you know, without bashing yeah. you over the head with it. Does I heard some sense? people, I, I mean, did some reading and some people thought that the fan service was really heavy handed, especially in the, the episode where they go to Tatooine and start listing out all these things. And to me, it just sounded like all the things you would run into if you were on Tatooine. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And like, yes, there were stormtrooper helmets on pikes. And that was kind of reminiscent of a scene in A New Hope where it was they were they were like running the town. Right. So 
I I I've, I've loved every sort of reference and thing that's gone forward, and I think it's been that aspect of it I have no problem with at all. Yeah, yeah, I think that was I think that's a good example of a ton of fan service that was not heavy handed. The heavy handed version would be when he walked in, he he would say, I. Th- Hey, you're a droid behind the bar. I thought you didn't allow droids in here. <laughs> right. You know? And instead, right. there was a droid behind the bar. Mm, right. So that's and, interesting. And <laughs> so they had they had a shot of speeders going across the Dune Sea. Well, that is how you get across the Dune Sea. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought they did it well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and I, yet I did I like, like some sp- things they did repeat, like... Uh, he he makes that comment in the first episode, the the Mandalorian in the very first episode, in the beginning. He's he says to his bounty, "I can bring you in warm. I could bring you in cold," and I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna like this." Right. But then there's a callback to that in the subsequent re- the subsequent epi- episode where a lesser bounty hunter is after him and tries to use that line on him, and of course he 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 blows him up. It was a, it was he a blows him up, chase. and he goes, "That's my line." <laughs> I say that. <laughs> right. And but and there they are. They're making their own stuff. And you can make your own memes, you know. I have spoken. This is the way. I mean, we've we've got these things now and their own they're their own memes and we they maybe they'll end up getting uh you know, they'll they'll be <laughs> end up getting overused. But we don't have to have you know, we don't we don't have to have all of the all the old callbacks and in super obvious ways. I mean, and another, here, another piece of, of interesting fan service is the appearance of the dark saber. Yeah. Um, I know we're jumping all the way to the end now, but right. Right. The, the dark saber oh, shows not? up. Um, but nobody says, Oh my gosh, it's, you know, he has the dark saber. Or, How did know, he get that? I'll cut yeah. my way out with my dark saber, you know, right. You, if, if you're a fan, you, it's, it's interesting to you because you know what that is. It was, you know, it's, it's, it's a very iconic weapon from parts of the Star Wars canon that aren't, you know, that you, you sort of need to be a a fan for. It's not, it wasn't in the most recent movies, for example, it wasn't in any of the nine movies of the, of the nine elegy. Um, But it also wasn't, you know, it wasn't told, it was just shown and it wasn't, that we don't know what the deal is. We don't know how Moff Gideon got it. We don't know. And they didn't have to like wave it around and go, you know, dark saber, dark, dark, dark saber here. So yeah. So that's good. All right. So we went, well, well, I, we went further than I, 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 I meant to on that, but we can, uh, um, yeah. The, well, the, yeah, they mentioned <laughs> beggars Canyon. No, beggars Canyon was when he was at his T 16 and Bullseye and Womp Rats in my T-16 bag in Big, Bigger's Canyon. Shut up, Luke. Uh, <laughs> they mentioned a bunch of stuff. Uh, so let's 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 start at the top with the um, with the with the creators and the executive producer. John Favreau create is the creator um, and assisting with the with the writing, and executive producer is Dave Filoni. Um, John Favreau, I've I I know from lots of stuff. I don't. I didn't read up on how he got the the job to be the show to run the show. Um, besides just being an awesome director and producer and actor on his own right, that's probably it. But um, he was a great pick because I think he's done a great job with it. Um, did you know Dave Filoni um, beforehand? I I, I didn't um, because I haven't watched. Um, yeah, I didn't, but. Then I did be wait long before the Mandalorian actually came out because there was so much um, from the fan base saying, "Oh, good, Dave Filoni." Yeah, so I looked right. Into it. And everybody was really excited because, and I, you know, for anybody who who doesn't didn't still doesn't know who Dave Filoni is, he did the the animated series The Clone Wars. So he was an an he was in animation. He did a lot of the animation work on Avatar. Um, Lucasfilm really liked the work that he did on Avatar. They got him uh, onto the Clone Wars animated series, and he did some amazing work. So then they said, well, hey, we're thinking about doing the Rebels. 
uh, Star Wars Rebels animated series. And, you know, why don't you do that too? And now he's the director of all Star Wars animated um, production. Anything they do animated, Dave is now um, executive producer over all of that. Uh, but then they brought him into this, which was great because you can you can see the, the some of the few sort of like lore and canon and fan servicey kind of things that were that manifested in the animated series like the dark saber the story of the dark saber is told in the animated series just it's showing up here that i think is the feloni influence um in a big way which is kind of cool well i i think in general having rep yeah that's i think that's part of the whole thing about referencing all the material which i think is really cool Right. I think... And since we're talking about real people, I also think it's cool how many cameos there... Well, yeah. Yeah, cameos and small parts are, are in The Mandalorian. I hope they keep that up. Oh, I love it. And I love it that... And I think this is, again, it's Favreau. I think he's got a good eye for what would make a good cameo and sort of going off in a couple of interesting directions. And the only reason... I, I read a couple of the bios and a couple of the descriptions and like the the uh the actor who who's Cara, does Cara Dune Gina Carano mm -hmm. um Cara I'm sorry Cara Dune she says it should pre be pronounced Cara Dune um because it's actually based on her last name Carano uh she's she's a, a a great actor but she's I I guess um Favreau the 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 claim goes and who knows if this is apocryphal but supposedly John Favreau said I've got this idea for this character, shock, ex shock trooper. Um, I need Gina Carano to to do this part. I've got no one else in mind. She has to do it. So I, I like this. I've painted this picture in my head. That is John Favreau picking out Gina Carano to do Cara Dune and picking out Bill Burr to be Mayfield. Which who would have who would have put pulled Bill Burr into in, <laughs> into in, well from the very the very first episode when the speeder comes up and the mandalorian says no droids and the next speeder comes up that guy driving the speeder was a, a comedian or a comic actor recognizable right yeah 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 um I've, i forgot his name but he's he's been in a bunch of stuff and i really like him um uh amy sudeikis um uh that's that's her name right yeah uh, it's um <laughs> well, I knew her name till you said that, but it's not what you said. <laughs> it's not Sedacus. It's uh, uh, Sedaris. <laughs> Sedaris. And that actually, I was going to mention Jason that Sudeikis. because, well, just I love how the episodes end with these still artworks, these still shots. Yeah. And they're in kind of in an array of different styles, but they um, are a, a, a few, a handful of styles. But a lot of the characters in these stills look like the actor, except for um, that character looks like Linda Hunt. Yeah. And I, it makes me feel like that they definitely had clear pictures in mind. When you said that about Cara Dune, I can totally see that. Yeah. So I, I think you're right. And I did notice that some, some of them look like the, the actors that they had that like it was drawn to, to, to copy that actor. And some of them look like it was, a storyboard picture with someone else in mind and then they got someone else to do the part. So yeah, I wonder, yeah. um, but I'm, and Linda Hunt has been in a, in a star Wars movie. I think she was in rogue one, but, um, so it's not like she's, and she would have done do well in that, in that part as well, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of Amy Sedaris. And yeah, she was really good in this. And yeah. She, she was, she was really, really good in, as, as that part. And, I thought Bill Burr was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he basically played himself. <laughs> <laughs> and the nameless blue guy. In I the wasn't first a episode. stormtrooper, jackass. <laughs> Whatever he says. <laughs> I wasn't a stormtrooper, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were several several jokes throughout all the episodes. I mean, across this, this, the episodes about stormtrooper aim. Um. Who is the the woman? What was the woman's name? Is was that who played um, the Twi'lek? Xian um, Xian. Xian, is that? Yeah. Oh, that's the Twi'lek's name. Yeah. Yeah. Natalia Tena is is her name. She's been in some interesting stuff. 
uh, my my daughters didn't like her li- like that character. I didn't either. You didn't like her either. Did you think no. it was like too campy and too overacted? Or why didn't you like it? Um, I, I ended up liking yeah. it. At first, I thought I didn't, but then I then I did, and then I then I, I liked didn't. It. I thought, yeah, I thought overacted. Like, what if she had been evil, like um, Werner Herzog was? Instead, she was like sticking her tongue out and doing all the sort of super obvious I'm a bad person things. I don't know. It's just... Twir- yeah, twirling a mustache, snidely yeah. whiplash. Little... Yeah. It, w- it was a little a little overacted as In far fact, as In fact, that, that went, episode, but... um, like, she and her brother, I think part of it for me, too, is they don't match my internal picture of Twi'lek. And also, Blurg, or whatever his name is, didn't match my internal picture of a Deveronian. Uh, right, right. Because I see them most more like Galt, like wisecracking and smart and right. And in fact, in the animated series, there's a there's a Deveronian who's who's a a traitor and a traitor and a smuggler and cu- you know cutting the deals and I think there's even a, a a couple of them like that. And yeah, how how Galt is in Swotor. Yeah, I I, I kind of agree, but you know, I st- I still bought it and I that's a small thing. Yeah, and I I didn't mind it because I figured, you know, I I got past it and, and rationalized it and said, okay, oh, you know, maybe not all Twi'leks are are that way. Yes, and, Twi'leks are allowed to be individuals. Yeah. yeah. So so there's that, and they were criminals after all. And they were criminals, and they they were you know she she and despicable characters. She she was it it did feel like overacting, but then I sort of got into it, and I you know then I like the. I liked her her use of knives and and you know how how she yeah. played it played it up that way. Um, yeah, but she had to know that her little daggers weren't going to hurt the Mandalorian. <laughs> but you got to try, right? Well, she got one stuck in him. But, That's true. But they were like um, I don't know if they were they were like vibro daggers, but they they like lit up a little. They they had they were powered daggers. Yeah. They weren't gonna punk puncture, be, you know, Beskar, but. All right, so let's talk. Uh, let's go back up just a little bit and um, mention the directors, because I thought that was also interesting how they were bringing in guest directors for some of the episodes. So yeah. Dave directed two of the episodes. So director credits John Favreau isn't the isn't credited as director on any of the episodes directly. So he's creator, showrunner, potentially helping direct, but and so he wrote some of them too. Yeah, and I think it was yeah he was co-credited on writing i think on all of them but in terms of directors dave filoni directed to deborah chow directed to and so deborah chow is director she was known for uh better call saul and american gods i still haven't watched american gods oop did i just get logged out um because oh, i was standing i, I haven't think even I'm been looking at long. game um get, get back in there I was hoping that my internet didn't crash. No, we're still alive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yay. So so Deborah Chow, she did some some interesting stuff there. Uh Rick Fam uh Famiwa, who I did not recognize his name, and it he is, he had not done much uh, much bigger stuff. He's he's done some indie stuff. He's worked um in Sundance. Um, the Sundance Lab, sort of development of, of those kind of indie films. I guess some really interesting work, but he did two episodes. Uh, 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 Taika Waititi, who's Thor Ragnarok, and everybody loves him. He's hot in the nerd scene lately because of his work on Thor Ragnarok, which was one of the best Marvel I movies. I enjoyed that movie, yeah. Of the past uh, few years. And he's, he's, he's always awesome when he inserts himself into the material. As he did uh, in the Mandalorian, as uh, as IG Eleven, right? Right. And then uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, who I didn't realize that 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 was um, that was Bryce Howard in uh, the Jurassic movies uh, as the co-star to, um, to to what's his name? I didn't know that either. So she was she's been the main star of the. The, the female lead for the last couple of Jurassic Park movies. Huh. Which was which, which was fine. I a lot of people diss those movies, but I but I I'm amused by them. I, I thought it was fine. 
but I guess she's done some side, um, more smaller scale uh, shorts that she's directed. Uh, but uh, she directed an episode of this too, which I think is, is going to give her some good credits moving forward. Uh, she's also Ron Howard's daughter, which I didn't uh, realize either. I mean, the name Howard, but... Oh, uh, chat room is reminding me. That's I. I thought I heard something like that. So, Deborah Chow, who did the two episodes of The Mandalorian, she has been tagged to be the director of the Obi Wan Kenobi series, um, that is in production from Disney as well. And yes, we are all quite excited about that. But I wanted to mention the directors because what was the oh, it was the prisoner? It was the, the yeah. prisoner episode with the Twi'leks at the very end three Republic pilots come in and they end up bombing the station uh, because the, the Mando dropped the, the tracker <laughs> as he, as he left because they double crossed him. The three Republic pilots that come in were Dave Filoni, um, Rick uh, Famu, Famu Famu Iwa, Iwa, and Deborah, and Deborah Chow, Chow. <laughs> which I thought was kind of cool. I, yeah. And I like that they're, bringing in so many different people because that gives me feeling like they they're in it for the marathon right like they're not just basing it on an ensemble cast only right right and and you got that feeling when they brought people in and out too and they they brought some really strong people in and out but then kept some of the ones that they brought in and kept them going so like Cara Dune I would expect her to be back um unfortunately um Queel um, will not be back. Nick Nolte as as Queel, uh, which is sad because I, I I thought Queel was awesome. I, I wanted him to, to like join the crew and and ride around in the ship with him. Yeah, uh, I I kind of like the idea of the crew, but maybe I am just longing for more Firefly. I I didn't I don't know why I did not put that Firefly connection together that, that you mentioned, Seema. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, really I don't want to. I'm not finding a lot of similarities. I just meant no. the Western. This the style of the Western and setting. And a ship and going space. from planet to planet in the in sort of like the you know the edge outback worlds and you know doing your own thing and getting some jobs and I mean there's there's some parallels there and you you can't take the sky from me maybe he should have said that <laughs> <laughs> you, you you can't take the sky from me I'm a leaf on the wind uh, don't don't clean your spears by putting them through the wash. Uh, <laughs> anyway uh who else did they kill oh uh werner herzog unfortunately uh because i would have liked to see him continue but i think he would have been you know he's got other work to do <laughs> yeah what was his yeah, what was his name in the show uh he was just the the imperial dude werner herzog was zero the, the yeah. droid played by richard Aoade, he got killed. IG-11 got killed. Yeah. Yeah. Werner it's Herzog weird how you have can have the name. feels for a robot being killed. Yeah. Yeah, IG-11 was was pretty heroic by the end there. The the rebuilt IG-11. Finnick Shan, the assassin, is is probably killed. Uh, maybe. Yeah. So we'll maybe. Okay, well, I, I was gonna say we'll we'll get to that. No, let's 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 get let's let's hit on that. So a couple of the fun things that that we were sort of seeing. Oh, the the baby. Yeah, we. How could we have gotten this far and not mentioned baby Yoda? <laughs> baby Yoda. He is... he clearly found that baby on Ord Mantel. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So baby Yoda. So let's let's spend a couple couple minutes on baby Yoda. I think Baby Yoda was. Did, I, did they not realize what they had? Because here's here's the thing. I think if they wanted to make a billion dollars, they it was a huge missed opportunity not to merchandise. I can't I can't I can't decide if I think they were, you know, utterly heroic in not merchandising Baby Yoda for the for 19, 2019 holiday season, or if they just they just missed out and didn't realize how 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 important it would be and how beloved of a new little cute character it would be. In fact, I think it's to such a degree that the two cute characters from Rise of Skywalker are completely overshadowed and 
everybody wants a baby Yoda and nobody cares about the, you know, co little Coney droid and, you know, little mumble engineer guy. <laughs> I don't even know what their names are. See? I don't know. Maybe it's the, um, the sort of, you know how Disney did that thing where they sort of artificially put movies back into the vault so that they could, you could only buy them at certain times. Maybe, maybe they felt they were making baby Yoda more special. I don't know. I'm casting about. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I think the speculation was they didn't want any spoilers. They didn't want to, 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 you know, to have a factory churning out a bunch of the baby, the, a bunch of the dolls and have them ready to go when the show hadn't even started. And yeah, but that doesn't seem, that doesn't seem like the real reason to me. Yeah. I, I don't know. Let me see if this is the baby Yoda song. Look into his eye. <laughs> there's there's another one that's all over TikTok where it goes, baby Yoda, baby baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. So, so why does baby Yoda stick with the Mandalorian, and why does he always, you know, save him and stuff? I think, at first, I thought it was because baby Yoda knew that the Mandalorian was gonna take care of him and be his you know his father or whatever but now i think um possibly that that was more of like of, a, of, a, of an imprint thing because he opens up the egg and they do that little finger touch thing and that was like reinforced for me because in the stills at the end of the episode there was a beautiful painting of that moment where they where the mandalorian you know sort of sticks his index finger out and the little baby hand is reaching up to it so I think there might be an imprint thing going and and there's that scene where baby Yoda tries to kill Kara yeah <laughs> when they're arm wrestling in fact Kara I think responded on Twitter or somewhere I yeah I, I, if you look in her feed I think even from just like a week ago she said I legit passed out twice in filming that scene that baby Yoda is quite powerful <laughs> 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 the ba so the baby Yoda pu puppet actually has force powers <laughs> apparently or 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 just to get the, the proper acting they actually choked her <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> now we really need like 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 supposedly how Shelley Duvall was was abused by Kubrick and uh, on, on on filming of uh um The Shining Popeye? Oh, uh, shiny. Popeye. Popeye. Stanley Kubrick did not direct Popeye. <laughs> uh, but I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's the. I don't. I don't know if I buy the the imprint thing. I. I mean, to some degree, it seems like. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I do. Uh, I, but he's fifty I mean, years I old. I don't mean like an all powerful thing. Like he'll never I mean, have he, his own mind or anything about things, but. He had to imprint I mean, on on. Uh, I mean, he's been around for fifty years, and it's not. It's not like they never opened the egg. I mean, I'm sure they've been feeding him for, no, for fifty years. So yeah, that's true. So I mean, he has been around fifty years, but maybe they opened the egg at the moment because, like, he's clearly going through development, right? He's still toddlerish yeah. in his developmental stage. No, no, no choking. No, no, no choking. <laughs> What did we say about the choking? What did we say about the force choke? And the right, and the and the pushing the buttons in this ship. <laughs> oh, and that was so cute. Him, uh... <laughs> yeah, or when he yeah when he turned on he, like, yeah he he turned on some buttons and then he's like no. You know another thing I was like, thinking about reach slowly Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian in general is because part of it is it kind of has um, connect uh, not connections but similar to like the movie E. T. But the movie E.T. has this sort of like sadness to it. Like he wants to get home because he's separated from his people and blah, 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 blah. And the Baby Yoda thing is all sort of like, um, I don't know, sort of cute and positive. It's like it's you don't it's not overloaded with, oh, I'm separated from my people and now I'm going to die because of it. And Yeah. I'm see, I'm looking at these little scenes and he is, man, he is. He is so well puppeteered 
Right. He looks like he's taking it all in. And yeah, just the, I mean, it's not really obvious facial expressions and it's just like these little micro expressions that you just, you get what he's thinking and you, and you just. And it's, it's like, it's the same with the Mandalorian mm-hmm. himself because he's not a puppet, but he can't have facial expressions, but he has expressions that are, that come with, you know, just the way he turns his head or he looks down or he slumps well, or he stands tall or whatever. It's in a similar it's way. Remarkable. I yeah. think, um, I think the Mandalorian's, Pedro Pascal's ability to emote without ever seeing his face throughout throughout the series was pretty amazing. Yeah. Just, just the the, just the most minor tilt of the head. In fact, in the prisoner episode there was there was a good comment from, you know, his his handler, the old old dude, um, who was like, What's what's with the look? <laughs> is that gratitude? Yeah. yeah is that gratitude? That. I think it's gratitude. But but that whole idea of yeah I mean you could tell you could tell he was giving you a look even though you can't see his face and you could tell Pedro Pascal was was acting it so well so yeah I think they did a great job with Baby Yoda and and puppet it puppet it, puppeteering and emoting except for just stop picking him up I I <laughs> cannot stand when they pick him up because it goes from like this this live vibrant thing to like a like a cinder block brick in a blanket I, but i think what we're talking uh, about here is why i didn't really like Xion because she was like on the other side of that continuum she was like over emoted and yeah no no subtlety over emoted and yeah 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 good point and especially compared to like especially in a scene with pedro pascal in the helmet yeah that makes a lot of sense um, I also like when Baby Yoda after he after he does something he just falls over backwards. I'm gonna sleep now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. And I mean, since we already talked about the last episode, I loved that because when the Mando was saying no, I'm done for. I'm not gonna make it. Leave without me. You know the the what I was thinking would happen was that Baby Yoda would heal him, but Baby Yoda couldn't heal him because baby yoda had to do the more immediate thing of saving everybody everybody from the flamey mm. armageddon you're right right so they sort of got past that so that i hope he gets a name in season two that's a good i was just thinking that i was just thinking that so now he's just the child uh Whereas even the Mandalorian, although I, I, I barely even know the Mandalorian's name is Jin something, right? What's his name now? Jin. It's Din Djarin. Din Djarin. Din Djarin. Um, there's a lot of good names. I was thinking about that too. How do you, I just, I'd love to be on the naming council or the, and I keep getting logged out here. Um, I guess I should jump around more, but I love I love the I love the names. All these names are good. Grief Karga, which is Carl Weathers, who did this amazing job, too. And I just I laugh every time I think of Carl Weathers because I only think of him from Happy Gilmore and from Arrested Development as himself, in a ridiculous role. Uh, but he did good. Wheel that was a good name. Cara Dune was a, was a good name. Uh, Moff Gideon I think is good. Mayfield was a good name for. These are all just really good names. I mean, how do you come up with such great names? I mean, even Fennec Sh- Shand. I like that they Shand, came up yeah. with names that were like not recognizable as names to us, but still easy to say and easy to remember. Not, you know, strings of syllables. Right. I hope they. I hope they bring. Um, I hope they bring her back. Um, I also love. I mean, so, sort is, of unrelated, really cool. but I love that they that scene with the stormtroopers in the last episode too, where two stormtroopers actually got to have lines <laughs> and <a> personalities. <laughs> and that, that was a little bit of fan service and a little bit of obvious fan service uh, when they were trying well, to because shoot they the had the, the target the shooting part, but yeah, <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> and, but, but yeah, the, just their whole little interaction with one was like, you think, you think we should, you think we should look at it? No, we're not going to look at it. Just shut up about looking at it. Well, 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 
Well, it has it has. What if he's thirsty? What, maybe it's, <laughs> can we give him some water? It's not. It's just no. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, and I love when they were trying to shoot the can on the ground, and then they're like looking at the blaster and shaking it. <laughs> But the, yeah, well, and then they were hitting read, baby. My my daughters read, hated that they kept punching Baby Yoda too. They were mad about that. If you read the book, the the, the short story book from different perspectives or whatever it's called, there was a stormtrooper story in there where they comment that um, the the their weapons are not calibrated right. That you have to you have to like gauge and and aim way to the side if you want to hit anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. That seemed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yes. Force chuckle. Stop hitting Baby Yoda. That's the other thing they kept sticking. Well, that's what I, him. that's what I said. Yeah, my 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 daughters are really mad about that. <laughs> and I didn't like game. it too when that one that one bounty hunter came to the um, the Krill planet, the bucolic planet, and had little Baby Yoda in his crosshairs. I'm like, oh my god, no. Yeah. And I mean, I wasn't really worried. Right. I mean, that was a little too early for, uh, but then, yeah. I started when I was thinking about organizing my thoughts for this, I started to write down all my favorite moments, but then I, I deleted it because they were all when baby Yoda does this and when baby Yoda <laughs> does that <laughs> and when this happens to baby Yoda and I'm like, okay, disturbing pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But one of my favorite moments is on the Krill planet when um, Cara Dune and the Mandalorian are fighting, and then you just hear the <laughs> slurping sound, and they t they look up, and there's Baby Yoda with his bone broth, just watching them fight. Yep, Sl slurping on the soup. Yeah, like a, like a like a spectator having a snack in the stands. Yeah, <laughs> right. That was kind of hilarious. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we are we are coming coming to the end here. I I wrote a couple thing other things that I that I liked. We'll we'll just throw them out there. I know we could talk about this for for hours and hours. We probably could have done a whole podcast series one after each each episode. I feel like, um, probably. I, I loved how they didn't take his helmet off. I loved the whole deal with Beskar and the the ingots of Beskar and turning it into the armor. Um, I thought that was really cool. Um. I like his ship, which is a Razor Crest, which is the type of ship they just they still call it the Razor Crest. Uh, oh, why don't I have a note here about Bat? So, he, so the droid used Bacta to to heal right. him, and I was gonna start a a Bacta versus Colto argument, but apparently oh, Bacta is much be better. Shy. Get out there! Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm fine down here, the Jawas. I love the Jawas. Oh, don't be like that. Um, one of us. Suga. They, Suga, right. Suga. they sent him on a quest to get the egg, the egg, the egg, the egg, and then they, then they just ate it. And Suga, Suga in Jawa, if you look it up on Wikipedia, just means food. So they, they all, it was, it wasn't like some sacred delicacy, even they just were just calling it, oh, some good food. Go, go get us this food that we remember. Go. <laughs> right, right. There's a good, there's a snack in there. Go, go get it. Um, um, I think in season two we're gonna hear a lot more about the dark saber. Yeah, I. I mean, I think I would expect when the Mandalorian finds out that he has it, he's gonna have to do something about that. Well, it, it was a significant part of the Clone Wars animated series and Star Wars Rebels, and then there's a gap to to figure out how it got from where it ended up in Star Wars Rebels into Moff Gideon's hands. So we hopefully we at least find out. Um, connect those dots a little bit or maybe we don't I and mean, it's a little bit of a mystery i don't mind the mysteries but i would expect that moff gideon will be around it just seems like we just met him and he's we're just setting him up and he's got the dark saber and yeah you would talk, talk to, just the, to finish your thought on that um you 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 drove home that point to me that about why the dark saber might be interesting to the mandalorian um I forget what I said, but it'd be interesting to him because uh, it was originally, I mean, it's a Mandalorian weapon. Right. It was created by right. Tar Vizsla, right. yeah, who's I mean, the, yeah. who was the first Mandalorian Jedi and was, um, yeah, has been, has played a big role in Mandalorian history and Moff Gideon, it's going to, you know, it's going to, he's not going to like that Moff Gideon has it. I, yeah. And I didn't think of that right off, but yeah, I, I mean, 
he's a Mandalorian and it's a Mandalorian artifact. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to like couch that all by saying too, that it's not at all clear to me that he is like, this is like, this isn't some splinter group of Mandalorians too. So I, I don't know if he, if this represents all of the Mandalorians that were around at that time. I don't think it does. And I, I feel like from a lore and canon perspective, it is a little bit of a splinter group. Um, because yeah. their whole this is the way that that whole part of them and not to, and you can never take off your helmet and that's a little that's bit new. of a different spin yeah from mandalorians in the past now in theory Django and boba fett weren't actually mandalorians so even though uh, boba fett has mandalorian armor he's not he wasn't actually a mandalorian i think that's part of the canon but in the animated series there's mandalorians and they take off their helmets so into and there's at least other right. Mandalorians who don't mind taking off their helmets, but right. these guys, these guys didn't. Maybe something happens <laughs> after this that changes things. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. So we'll see. Um, and and I think people who lost patience with the pacing of the the story, the main story arc, should just settle in, because I think it's going to be like that should just shut up about it <laughs> i think they're gonna i think it, we're gonna get shut more up, Max. <laughs> episodic stuff i i as i was saying i kind of hope so yeah in fact i want to embrace that and i want 16 episodes next next fall instead of eight and give me a you know give me a whole bunch more of them and go you know go go do some bounty hunting for for a couple episodes i'm i'm cool with that I I'll just I just want to hang out in that in that world in that universe and I I felt that since the first episode I I felt like even if this arc doesn't you know end up in some epic place that's going to drive things forward I wouldn't mind just hanging out in this in this setting and going on you know small side adventures forever I would be yeah. I would I would be cool with that um so yeah all right. Well, I think that is a, uh, I think that's a that's a, a relatively rambling and scattered. <laughs> I think we should stop and, now. And uh, but but fun rundown of the Mandalorian the TV show. Uh, we'll get another season. Unfortunately, not for about uh, ten months, but we'll get another season uh, someday. It's already been confirmed by Favreau, and I'm totally looking forward to it. And as soon as I can, I want a plush, uh, official plush <laughs> Baby Yoda. I, I, t I don't buy things. I don't, like, I don't buy Funko Pop. I don't, but I would have bought four plush Baby Yodas. <laughs> one for each of the kids <laughs> and one for me. Uh, that's where they missed out. They missed out on that sweet, sweet Max merchandising money. Uh and you know either they were just staying really true to to some vision of theirs or or they just missed or they missed, missed a mark. yeah they just didn't realize how beloved of a character they they were creating there anyway with that i think we can uh wrap up our our podcast first podcast of of 2020 so as always and as we'll continue in 2020 please keep keep up with us on twitter at max the Grain, at aie sema and if you know any cool people that should be playing with us tell them to come check us out on starforge which is our server they can also find our guild information at aie-guild.org where they can get a link to our guild discord jump in there and ask for an aie invite on the republic or the imperial side and we'll get you set up we would love to have you and we will talk to you soon later everyone <laughs>